Hello once again everyone. You might be wondering to yourself, what, what exactly am I doing down here in the depths of Brightstone Cove? Well, while I did leave off last time at the tippy top of Broom Tower about to make my way into the Iron Crown DLC, I realized I have a lot, and I mean a lot, of upgrade materials and nothing to use them on. And I thought, you know, that's that's kind of a shame. I've been playing this whole game this far with basically two real weapons, and I think it's time for a change of pace. So, I'm gonna come down here and I have some boss souls to trade in. Just an absolute ton. And there's quite a few weapons that would really suit this character. The Wrathful Axe, for one, is one that I'm kind of interested in. I'm considering whether or not to grab the Sacred Cham Hammer, but considering that the only other thing Velstat's soul is useful for is his miracle, and I don't really want to use his miracle. I do think I'll be grabbing that. Nothing else here seems very good. I've already got my butcher's knife. That's the sacred chime hammer and the uh, wrath flax. Your spear could be nice, but I don't think its moveset would be too good on this character. It's not really what I'm looking for. And so the Iron King Hammer is the only other option that I might want, but I'd have to two-hand it, so probably going to pass on that. And after this, I can head right on over to Strayed and pick up some of his weapons, though admittedly I'm going to have to burn a few souls. Let's see, I've got tons of souls. Let's just use like 11 of these. That should be enough for me to trade in some souls for some weapons, as well as upgrade some of them once I bring everything back to Majula. Just wanted to make sure I got all of this on camera so you guys kinda knew what was going on with the character and I didn't just show up with surprise new weapons. Ow. Whew. Thought he was gonna pop on me. And luckily I managed to get him right in the last moment. So this smelter sword is gonna be so useful. It's got the perfect stat spread fairly quality scaling with the physical stats and a bunch of fire scaling once it gets up there. There's also a little bit of an option here. Of course I'm gonna grab the Pursuer's Ultra Great Sword. It's just again perfect, really nice pseudo quality stat line. There's the Warped Sword, Arced Sword, and Barbed Club. Now these all seem like fairly mediocre weapons but I don't have a large curved sword, and the arc sword has sort of quality stats, so I'm going to grab that as well. The Dragon Rider uh, Halberd is actually pretty great for a quality build. I could also grab the Dragon Rider Twin Blade, but I don't quite like it. The Bone Scythe, eh. I'll grab it just in case I want the option, but I don't actually think it fits the aesthetic I'm going for. And, of course, the Spotted Whip is great for poison, so... A lot of stuff. Of course, I also want the Toxic Mist and Acid Surge for all the pyromancy I'm going to be doing. And there we go. That's all for Strayed. I've got enough to upgrade several weapons in just plain souls, and I'm still going to be able to pick out a few more that I might want. So one that I'm already guaranteed is, of course, I want the Smelter Sword, but... I have another choice when it comes to boss soul weapon because I've got 30 or so of the petrified dragon bone and each boss weapon takes 15 to fully upgrade so I have some options let's have a look see I've also got twinkling titanite so I'm looking out for a good twinkling titanite weapon to upgrade I could get the pursuers ultra great sword but I think I've got enough I think the smelter hammer fits that little niche. I can't use the wrathful axe just yet because I don't have the faith for it, but it's a weapon that I'm going to want to use once I get the proper stat line. I think the butcher's knife is the best of all the boss soul weapons that I have thus far to fit the character, so let's pop that all the way on up. I'm considering actually grabbing the dragon slayer's crescent axe as one of the Twinkling Titanites, but I haven't quite decided. There's a whole b slew of weapons that take Twinkling Titanite, but 
really not sure which one I'm gonna want just yet. I might, in fact, just hold on to it for a while and save it up. Santa Sphere, of course not, no. That weapon used to be just ridiculously good, and now it's fairly mediocre. You know, I might want the Black Knight, uh, just regular greatsword. That would be a good one to put all this twinkling into. Uh, let's see. And there's basically nothing from this point on. I do want to upgrade my short bow all the way up to max which means that I don't have enough to upgrade a regular weapon all the way up. But, should I upgrade the Black Knight Halberd? Hmm. You know, I don't have anything else per se that I could want to use it on. So, eh. I think I'll just hold on to my Twinkling Titanite until I have a better idea of what I want to do with it, but that's all the upgrading I want to get done, and now let's sub in one of those weapons. Get rid of the regular sword for the smelter sword. And the lion great axe can sub on out for the butcher's knife. This is going to be a big hit to my... Where is it? It's a big hit to my weight. As you can see, it just barely squeezes in under 70%. So I'm going to have to deal with shorter rolls and less stamina regen. But I really like it. It feels pretty, pretty great. Not going to lie. If I absolutely just cannot deal with this much weight, I could maybe mix and match, but these two weapons just look so great and really fit the build thus far. So, or what I want to be using for now at least. Come on, spear your fire. There we go. I already have these first six smelter wedges, so I can just run right on up when this is done and claim the first fragment of Nadalia's soul. The friggin' hands are f weird. They're just so strange. And all the different uh, models for the Ashen Idol, the hands are in weird positions and just kind of freaky. What is... Th oh, I was like, I saw that little white thing across the way and it's like, is that a hole in the tower? No, it's just a little clump of ash. Yeah, the textures here, pretty, pretty generic. Very quickly repeat, not the best. But it does help that they've got the white ash aesthetic to kind of draw your attention away from that, as well as it's just a very vertical level. So you, while it's not the best looking, it still has a wonderful design. Oh yeah, two shot these guys with that. Let's see if I can get a one-shot on a jumping attack. I would really like it if that were the case. Yes! Oh, beautiful. Oh. That's not what I meant to do, but I'll take it. And I'm gonna... Oh, take that on the chin. Because I wasn't paying attention to it. Oh, really? Even a one-handed double attack will take them out. I have a lot of damage. I mean, I am built fairly glass cannon, only getting myself up to uh, very mediocre levels of vigor, endurance, and vitality. But I wasn't expecting to be doing quite this much. The one-shot with the jumping attack on the smelter sword is really insane. Like, I was not expecting that to be the case. That's just really crazy. Get my plus seven scythe. Now... I could just go down this ladder, but I actually don't want to come back this way ever. And if I go down the ladder to clear it all out, then I miss out on the little side loot with the possessed armor that's down the falling path. So I am actually just going to grab that and face a few extra enemies all at once when I'm... Uh, I suppose fire, probably not the best idea for taking him out, but I'll take it. It keeps him staggered easily enough, so it serves its function. Come here and grab these human effigies and a bonfire aesthetic. Really nice. Not too great, but, you know, anytime you can get aesthetics, generally pretty good. Now, this immediately aggroes two of these guys, but I, sh oh, I should be able to get staggered. 
repeatedly because I have no poise. And now I'm facing three of them, which means I get to make some distance and I get to mm, get staggered again. There we go. Oh, what? That was a one shot last time. Let's get this. Oh my god. Oh, that's right. They have the ash. The ash in protection is making me misjudge my damage numbers. If they weren't ashen, that first hit would have taken them out. But no such luck. If they weren't ashen, that second hit that I did with the running attack would also have taken them out. But again, they had that armor protection that I wasn't accounting for, and so I got punished for it. Quite severely, in fact. Now... I can do my little... Oh! Aw, I didn't hit him with a follow-up. Oh well. The butcher's knife is incredibly quick and just gives you a lot of versatility. Not only does its attacks come out incredibly fast and with a lot of damage and stagger potential, but it also has the utility of its strong attacks, which one-handed get you a really really long range kind of uh, step forward attack and while you're using it in two hands get you this wonderful crushing attack that's basically gonna stagger any one or anything in game grab these two bits of loot that'll provoke the two hidden enemies to pop up which isn't a problem Let's see, backstab should be a one-shot. Yes siree. And that allows me to come in here and grab these two chests. Wonderful, full clear as I'm going through. There will be a few things I need to come back for that actually require the elevators in order to be accessed, but they're few and far between. Specifically, the only thing I think I've missed thus far is the Baneful Bird Ring, which I'm gonna grab, but isn't actually useful at all for this character, considering I almost never block. Come right on through into here, and they introduce us to these barrel exploder fellas. Very simple. Very easy to deal with. <laughs> it is... Ah, uh, yeah, no, that's that's a bad idea. I am definitely certain that that's meant to sort of ambush you with the uh, explosive barrels, the static explosive barrels, forming like a little chain reaction, but it's still just a really great introduction to their mechanic. Come on, into the fire with you. Yeah, there we go. That is easily the best way to take out the possessed armor, because the possessed armor enemies in this game are just incredibly difficult. Very, very powerful enemies that you don't want to deal with if you can avoid it. These guys, however, are very glass cannon. They take a ton of damage, but dish out a ton of damage in return, so you want to be careful with how you're engaging. Generally speaking, you can stagger them with marked regularity, but it's not always the case. Oh, God, no! Oh, no, 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 no. Let's let's try that again. Much better. Chaining in the special attacks of the butcher's knife into your combo is also a really great way to handle its move set. It is a incredibly powerful weapon like with only the ring of blades at um yeah, 4040. It has a full 300, yeah, 451 attack rating. That's very powerful for how quickly it swings. It's basically one of the strongest one-handed axes in the game, but whereas most one-handed axes uh, are kind of short and attack a, in a very quick fashion, it the Butcher's Knife has the very long reach, as you can see, as well as having the two special moves that can... Oh. Was I supposed to... Yes. Yes, I forgot something. But it has the long reach and the special moves that kind of make it 
the missing link between one-handed axes and great axes. I'm going to get these, at least two of them, to drop down there because I can trigger them with my fire arrows from my short bow. So if they get close to the big smelter enemy down there, I can do naughty, naughty things to him. If I was playing... Oh! Yeah, like this. This is what I want to use this for. Bingo. Kills the uh, one guy and gets this guy incredibly low, meaning I can take him out fairly quickly. Oh, well, was expecting that to kill, but not quite. Luckily, this weapon has really great tracking. Ignore him, because if you kill him before taking this out, she actually gains the ability to do the whole outcry attack that can cause you so much trouble. Whereas if you kill the statue before dropping down, then she just has no recourse. I could have uh, plinked those barrels and taken him out beforehand, but that would have been a little bit out of my way, so I just kind of let him live. He's not hurting anyone, especially me, so it's okay. Swing, swing, swing. And that's all she wrote. Very large weapons I'm dealing with right now, so it's very, very good for taking out these enemies since I can keep them staggered. Whereas, usually, I sometimes have issues with staggering these fellows, and so taking them out becomes a lot harder than it really needs to be. Oh, well, I take the backswing. If I'm going to abuse it so much, it makes sense that the enemies should too, so can't complain too much about that. I'm trying to lure this scythe guy out of range of the spellcaster back there, as most of the spellcaster's attacks will get hung up on the pillars. And if you wait too long, this battle axe guy will actually reach to reinforce before you have time to deal with the pike wielder, so definitely want to get that done as soon as possible. Oh dear. Thought I was taken in by that for sure, but managed to get out after just a single tick of damage. Yeah, no, let me heal up before I head down there. I am burning through my Estus, but I've been taking everybody out pretty consistently, so it's definitely a worthwhile trade. Get the clip, get the kill. want to kill this archer right off. He's going to be the biggest thorn in my side if I let him live. This shield guy next. And these two should be a fairly simple matter to take out on their lonesome. Especially since I can one-shot them. Any enemy you can one-shot is not a threat. Be it from backstabs or from jumping attacks, so long as you have enough damage to take them out in that one single hit, you're golden. Uh, that range. There we go. I, I, again, I cannot say how much I'm being impressed by these damage numbers. I'm, I wasn't really expecting to be able to kill these guys in just a solid two hit. Okay, <laughs> I say that and then that happens. But that was just because I missed the sweet spot on the axe. It, it is a weapon that has a sweet spot. It's just very forgiving because it's such a long weapon. But as I was saying, these weapons are just doing a lot more damage than I was expecting. I did want to trade up and get some weapons that were going to do a little bit more for me than just the regular Bastard Sword and Lion Great Axe. I mean, they're both great weapons. I wouldn't say that they're bad weapons by any stretch. I just wanted something with a little bit more punch to it, like either of these weapons, something that was really going to bring the full package of utility and just size and damage. And I think that these two weapons paired together are going to do me very well. Even if they do give me a ton of weight. Like, just ridiculous amounts of weight that I have to contend with. Come on. Send that along the way. And open this up while I wait for it to do its job. Oh! Hang on. I failed to rest at the last bonfire, so I was going to go into that encounter 
in fact, that entire run with incredibly reduced uh, weapon durability and Estus, and that's just a recipe for disaster. That is something that they kind of allow you to do in Dark Souls 2, is you can tag the bonfire and forget about it, about actually resting at it, and then head into your next encounter at a very, very big disadvantage, so... Let's let's not do that, thank you very much. You can just wait on that to do most of my work for me. Yep, took them all out. Head right on through. Something I noticed that I had never known before is... Oh, well, I wasn't quite able to show it to you there, but if you're looking very carefully, you can see that the fume sorceresses actually have a model in-game before they appear. It's a very small little clump of ash looking thing, but it is definitely there. Let's get you moving. I want to grab my petrified dragon bone right off because that's eight and I already have four, so all I'm going to need is three more after this and I'll be able to get another boss weapon all the way to plus five. Maybe incorporate that in start switching between some of them. And now it's these two. Ooh, Spikes on the hallway can be rather annoying. Even if they're not necessarily the worst environmental hazard ever. Ah, they just keep you staggered for that little extra moment that you just don't want to be vulnerable for. They always show up behind you, so the moment they disappear, just walk behind yourself, and you should be able to avoid them quite handily. Yeah, this quick great axe seems like the right weapon here. As you can see, oh, they make it so that you can't just safely roll around behind. If you are rolling around behind in order to get damage off on these guys, you're taking a risk, because you could get staggered by the lava that they pour out, as well as just take some damage from it, because there's just lava going every which way. They make it dangerous to just sidle around the enemy without actually confronting it. And that's just kind of the little design philosophy that they took when they designed these DLCs is they wanted to change the way you played the game. And I think that they were extremely successful at it. Now I could wait, or I could just explode him. And I explode him, but I fail. Let's try that again. Let's, this time let's let nature run its course, even though it's going to take a bit longer. It might be a little bit more risky to myself, because... The hitbox on the flame is actually very strange. Even if you pass directly through it, sometimes it doesn't trigger, so... It, it's just... I don't know. Not something you want to rely on, especially for something that precise. But that gets us most of the Katarina set. It, hopefully in the Ivory King, they'll give you the last little bit. I honestly couldn't imagine them not giving you that, considering that's kind of what they've set it up for. First they give you the helmet, then the leggings and gauntlets, and of course the assumption is that they're going to give you the chest piece. It may actually already have been confirmed, but I keep myself incredibly spoiler free when dealing with all these sorts of DLC, so I have no idea what's going to be coming up. Sadly I did get one small spoiler in that I saw a screenshot of a character along a snowy bridge. Aside from that, I, I've got nothing. I have no idea what's going to be coming up other than there will be a snowy bridge someplace, sometime, eventually. Now, I am going to kind of be pigeonholed into using strictly the uh, butcher's knife for this area just because I don't really want to set them on fire with my smelter sword. That just sounds like a terrible idea because it gives them a passive damage over time aura as well as a, uh, whatchamacallit, I think it actually boosts their damage and makes them more likely to explode as well. I could be wrong, but it would, oh, 
Do they take extra damage from behind? Because it seems like he wasn't dying as quickly as the others. I'll just back off. What? What? Can they do that? That's strange. That's the first time I've ever seen one enter that animation and then not blow up. I, I wasn't aware that that was a thing they could do. Looks like the joke's on me. But that's all of them for this hallway. I will be bringing out my Ultra Great Sword for the critical hits that I'm going to be grabbing on Miss Quicksword down there. Rachel, I believe. Yeah, Quicksword Rachel. But I think that's the only use it's going to be seeing on this run. Oh, hello. She didn't buff. And she has that infinite poise that I... Yeah, normally I would take this as an opportunity to uh, uh, get some quick backstab damage, but for some reason she didn't buff the moment I entered the fight. So I had that opportunity stolen from me. Oh, look at that damage. So beautiful. So beautiful. Let's get some range damage while I'm here. I kind of want to kite her out because she hurts in melee combat. Yeah, look at that. I'll just heal up, and I believe at this point a single, come on, just attack already, a single two-handed jumping strike will get the kill shot for me. Let's check. Mm, that hit her shield somehow. Okay. Not going to give me the shield break? Whatever, I killed you. Did I, have I really just been chugging through my Estus? That's sad to see. I was kind of expecting myself to do a little bit better here, but I haven't died yet, so that's heartening. There are worse things in the world than drinking a lot of Estus. Ooh, Messed that one up royally, but I still want to open... You know what? I'm not going to open that, just because I know there's no loot behind it. There's only a pair of these guys. Now, if I could... Yes, right there. Let me see if I can get my... No, I could just use my bow. Look, right there on the floor, this little pile of ash, can I actually hit it? No, I can't, but watch it as I head back. Yeah, you can see it starts to move, and then it apparates into this big fume sorceress. I just found that and was really surprised. I didn't know what I was looking at at first, but I spent a lot of... Oh, don't want to open that. There's no thing in there. I spent a lot of time farming the Fume Sorceress set on one of my other characters because it's such a rare drop that you basically have to go about farming it if you're going to want any chance of getting most of it. And so I spent a lot of time going through that one big open area, and every time that one uh, that actually apparates, I would, I was starting to catch on that, hey, there's something, something weird going on here. Let those two blow themselves up. These guys trigger when you attack one of them, grab the rod, or try to leave beforehand. Oh, goodness. I got scared and thought I wasn't going to have the damage. I personally think that the best idea is just to walk up near them and get them to explode but you can fight them in melee if you want sadly by the time you get to them most of them are going to be caught on fire from all the explosions going on everywhere and so you're going to take a lot more damage than you would really need to otherwise how did you avoid getting caught on fire? oh well here's your reward you actually get to be taken out by me rather than just kind of impotently exploding in front of me. How does that make you feel? And get me my smelter... What is it? Smelter rod? It's a key item. Scorching Iron Scepter. A scorching hot iron scepter used to activate the contraption by transferring heat to Broom Tower. When the old Iron King wrested this dilapidated region from the Kingdom of Ven, the act required all the resources the enfeebled lord could muster. But with discovery of this iron-producing miracle, he was reborn a powerful leader. 
yeah, I missed out on reading the description of that item my first time through, and so I wanted to read it out loud on camera, especially because it does establish a few really important things. Namely, that the old Iron King uh, captured this land from the kingdom of Ven. Second, that... Uh, does, does, let me check again. Yes, that uh, the old Iron King became a powerful leader only once he had conquered the kingdom of Ven and taken its lands. And another thing is that... Um, goodness. I had it. I had it. There was a reason I was showing you that. But, um... Ah, well. I've lost it. I'm a bit scatterbrained most of the time, and I guess I just failed to be able to call it to mind. But that will allow us to access this whole system of elevators. Oh, yes, yes! That's right. Um, a lot of people had speculated that the Old Iron King was actually the king of Ven. I mean, of Alken, and that this whole area was Alken. However, that cannot be after we read that item description because we know that the land the Old Iron King occupies was actually the kingdom of Ven. And since both Ven and Alken existed at the same time, we can pretty clearly decipher that no, this this land was not the land of Alken. If they were created by the same person, that would mean that, uh, whatchamacallit, Alken was the original land of, uh, whatchamacallit, it would mean that Ven was the original... God, I need to stop talking about things and focus on the enemies at hand for just a moment. The lore can wait. This guy is going to... Oh, dear. I aggroed too many. I regret everything. Kite. Kite back. Oh, the puny damage. It is worthless. Oh, th I thought there was a... Yeah, I was like, there was a doorway behind me. Why is that not working? But because Alkin and Ven are said to have been created by the same person, if, in fact, uh, the old Iron King's kingdom is that of Alkin, then he would also have had to have created the land of Ven and kind of rose through the ranks. But we know that's not the case because he was, uh, as we know from... Alon's descriptions, he actually came to help a nameless lord. It's just some random nobody. If indeed, uh, whatchamacallit, the old Iron King was some random nobody, he certainly wouldn't have... Oh, no, oh god, thank, thank the stagger. If he was just some nobody lord, then of course he wouldn't have been the man to actually have founded Ven. If he had founded Ven, then he would have been a very important figure. He would have been the king of Ven, quite simply. So it, it simply cannot be that the land of the old Iron King is the land of Alken. It's a bit complicated, but it all checks out. So people can shut the doors on that little line of thinking. We still don't know where Alken was, but based on the belfries, I suspect that it may well have been the Lost Bastille, or wherever the Lost Bastille was before it was taken over by Vendrick. The real troubling question, though, is uh, the Belfry Sol. The Belfry Sol lies within the Iron Keep, and yet is clearly related to the Prince and Princess of Alcon and Ven. Now, you could read this in a few ways, but I think the best way to interpret that... Did I grab everything here? I did. I think the best way to interpret that is that, um, what should we call it? The Iron King, when he discovered the miracle of creating iron from nothing, 
using the Scorching Iron Scepter, that he actually, instead of building up his own castle, just kind of plated over the old architecture with his iron. And in doing so, he kind of messed with the... Yeah, well, I can, I can get the elevator later. But in doing so, he made it too heavy, and so it sunk into the earth when the smelter demon went on its little rampage and killed the Iron King himself. It is still strange to me that there are two smelter demons, but... Eh, I, I just can't wrap my head around that. They're considering that the Iron Keep was destroyed when the smelter demon came to be, the idea of there being two of them just doesn't make sense, because you wouldn't have time to make two. The only real possibility is that they were both created at the exact same place and time. But that still doesn't work, because one's all the way up here in Broom Tower, down this little side passage we're about to go through, and one is down in the Iron Keep itself. It's, just, it's very troubling from a lore at, like, respect. It doesn't make sense. There should not be two. But... <sighs> That's just something we're going to have to figure out eventually. There there are some who still cling to the idea that Alken is the kingdom of Ven. Uh, not the kingdom of Ven, but uh, the kingdom of the old Iron King. But it just, it just doesn't work out, plain and simple. I'm just going to check how many Titan I have. I have 50 Twinkling. That is, like, I need to do something with that. And the Pursuer's Ultra Great Sword is probably going to be the next one up because this has the wonderful sweeping attacks, while the Pursuer's Ultra Great Sword has very vertical attacks. And there's a place for both within the build, so I am going to want to diversify. So I think that is going to be the next boss soul weapon. Actually, scratch that. I'm going to want the Wrathful Axe just to give myself even more diversity. I have plenty of weapons with very downward attacks, namely this and the Lion Great Hex, so that should be enough to handle that aspect, but I do need to save my Petrified Dragon Bone pieces for weapons that I am actually going to incorporate, like the Wrathful Axe, so that'll be it for this episode. We'll be heading back down to the Broom Tower, well I suppose it's back up into Broom Tower on the next episode, and I will see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching.